All right, so as many of you request to add a payment gateway to the SAP, so I decided to add the Stripe payment gateway to it. And also many students ask me to add the Stripe payment gateway to it, so that's why I choose it. All right, so in order to implement it, I will be using this website, which is, I will share the link in the description for you. And I do recommend you actually to read it in details and read it carefully and understand everything in it. And don't worry, actually, I will explain like 80% of the contents in this website. But as I said, it will be important for you to read it and understand it. And later on, if you want to use the Stripe payment gateway in Europe, you can use my tutorial and this link as a reference to make it. Now, before that, we start coding we need to understand how Stripe actually works. So for that, I searched for some diagrams that explain the steps briefly, and I will explain it in details. All right, so the first step will be is that the user will enter his information and then will be sent to the Stripe. And later on, once we write our code, the user will be prompt to enter his card information to this dialog in here. And once he had saved, the information will be sent to the Stripe. Now the Stripe will respond to him and give him a token. For sure, we'll give him a token if the visa is correct and his information is correct also. So this is called actually a REST API. So the user sent a request, then the Stripe give him a response. And if you aren't familiar enough with the REST API, don't worry, I will explain everything related to these steps in the detail. And I decided to make a course related to REST API and share it on UDB also. So don't worry, you will understand it later very well. Now, there's a few things to know about the REST API, which is I will explain it later in this tutorial. So stay tuned. All right, so for now, the token will be sent later and step three will be sent to the web server from the Stripe and from this phone device. And then the web server will analyze the user information and if everything is working fine, because actually Stripe has some constraints in order to work. For example, it doesn't accept doubles. So we need later on to convert the price to an integer. So once the web server finish analyzing the information, the transaction response will be sent to the Stripe and it will be sent to the phone. And as I said, the transaction response for sure, it may be failed and it may be succeeded. All right, so there's a few things, as I said, you need to know about the REST API. If I go to this link in here, there is some status codes for the REST API. And what you need to know in this tutorial is the 200 response and the 400 response. The 200 response means OK, as that request was successfully completed. And the 400 means it is a bad request. So the request is invalid. All right, so here's another diagram that differ than the other one it doesn't show this actually this verification for the visa diagram so here it is the visa will be verified then a response will be sent back to the stripe all right so one more thing about this diagram is that some stripe payment uses the firebase as a web server so they use a cloud function and deploy it to the firebase and they manage the user action in it and which is actually a good practice also but i will not be using it in this tutorial but i will share a link for you which is you can use it as a reference later on if you want to implement it using firebase also so here's will be communication between the flutter and the stripe and our web server which is the firebase and in order to do all of this work, for sure, you need to have a Stripe account. So you need to register an account. 
and you need to be familiar with three tabs from here which is the payment and the API keys and the logs so I did some tests for payments some of them are successfully done and some of them make an error so let's go to the logs tab in here so if we press on the first one the details will be displayed in here so as you can see it is 400 error so it failed already and in here they say the reason why it has failed so in here they say that the parameter invalid integer so as I said before we need to send an integer as a request we cannot send double so that's the reason why it failed in here so the other payments is successfully done in here everything is working fine and if we press for example in here it says the amount is too small now in here they say the amount must be le at least 0.5 USD and if you see in here the amount that's being sent is 5 actually it says is 5 cents not 5 dollars so you can realize from here that the amount that we sent need to be converted to a cents first and later on send it with the user information to be validated so you need to know three things if we go back to the card let's make a note in here actually I will make it in here and I will say to be known first thing is that the amount must be an integer All right, so I showed you the errors in here and what these error codes means. So now it's time to start coding.